Could Jordan Love's dynasty value soar in round one of the playoffs? All that and more in this episode of the Latan Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter, at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter, at Kate Majuk. You can follow her work at Pro Football Focus, Behind the Steel Curtain, Yahoo, and a million other places. Kate, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm ready for some playoff football. And there are going to be plenty of names for fantasy managers to keep their eye on heading into the weekend even despite the fact that obviously we've got a limited team of pools playing here in Super Wild Card Weekend, still a lot to watch. Still a lot to watch. And there are still so many players that have a lot to lose or gain for Dynasty specifically because remember, recency bias, very important in Dynasty Absolutely. Leagues. Yeah, so we're going to talk about a, a few players that we're curious to watch uh, or cu- curious to see here in Realm 1. Let's start with Jordan Love. I, I think... Everybody's really excited about Jordan Love. They've seen him beat up on some bad teams like the Bears and the Vikings. And now you get to see him in a primetime stage in Dallas against the Cowboys. How much do you think a big performance in a game like this would change his dynasty value long term? A big performance in a game, A, in primetime, B, in the playoffs, See in Dallas, like of all places on the road, this is going to be a very, very big challenge for Jordan Love. But let's recap his season. In his first year as a starter, just shy of 4,200 passing yards, uh, 32 passing touchdowns, 11 interceptions, ranked sixth over, overall, overall in quarterback fantasy points per game, right? And let's put some additional context because not just is it his first year as a starter, he was throwing to one of the youngest and most inexperienced receiving cores in the entire NFL. You had Christian Watson, who was on and off the field all year long with injury. You had rookies, Dontavian Wicks, Jaden Reed, uh, Romeo Dobbs, obviously just a second year wide receiver, even though he's like pretty much the most veteran receiver they have. Um, This was an absolutely crazy season for him to put up with that cast of receiving weapons. Now, you look at Dontavian Wicks and Christian Watson. They both rank 20, uh, top 25 in yards per reception among wide receivers with 50-plus targets this year. Then you look at Dontavian Wicks and Jaden Reed. They both ranked in that same cohort top 25 in yards after the catch per reception, yards per route run. Both of them ranked top 15 in NFL passer rating when targeted. I think we're looking at a very, very bright future here for the Green Bay Packers. We know how intricate this offense can be. Now, if Jordan Love comes out and he can actually put together a a capable game, I'm not expecting a win here against Dallas, but if he can look passable as an NFL quarterback, I think fantasy managers really need to start considering the fact that Jordan Love might be, you know, a, a Steady year in, year out, top 15 dynasty quarterback. Yeah. So, according to Dynasty League Football, going into the month of December, being drafted as QB 15, we know he had a great end of the season. I'm going to be pretty bold here. I think if he has one of these games where it's 330 yards and three touchdowns and the Cowboys upset, or excuse me, the Packers upset the Cowboys, you're talking about him like ahead of Tua and ahead of Trevor Lawrence. Like, I know that seems outlandish, but these Island games and these big playoff games, they just carry more weight when it comes to how dynasty managers feel about these players and look no further than Gabe Davis. A couple of years ago, Gabe Davis, well, 500 yards in the regular season catches four touchdowns in the playoffs. And all of a sudden he's a top 30 dynasty receiver. Jordan Love has a much better track record than that. He has the first round draft capital. He plays on a premier team. If he has a big performance in this game against the Cowboys, you are going to see his value skyrocket. So I'm not predicting that he's going to have that because typically, Kate, 
the playoffs are hard for first year quarter or sorry, excuse me, like first time starters. We yeah. usually see those guys struggle out of the gate. The speed of the game is different. This is a much better defense than he's played really over the last month. Um, and it's a really young team. Having said all that, I kind of think he's going to have a big game. <laughs> I think he could have a big game. And like, if nothing else, I think, you know, the fact that he's playing in this game uh, in and of itself, a huge, huge feat for, uh, you know, a, a young quarterback in this league. Again, I cannot undersell enough how, how tremendous it is what he's accomplished with the group of skill position players that he's playing with. Now, you look at, again, just what these players have done with, you know, it, you know, these are not all first round wide receivers, Marcus, like no. these are not guys that anybody had kind of pegged to come out immediately in the draft and, and produce big numbers. So by extension, I think I, I projected a lot of that, um, a lot of those low expectations for the receiving core onto Jordan love. And the fact that that hasn't translated, like the fact that these receivers have looked as good. And Marcus, I'm going to say in particular, I really want to watch Dontavian Wicks. He's a fifth round rookie, fifth round rookie. How is a fifth round rookie this efficient in his rookie season? Um, of course, you've got Jane Reed drafted in the second round this year, but just a, I think a lot of maybe untapped potential for dynasty managers. Um, maybe not just for Jordan Love, but in, in the receiving game, because I think all of these players are are trending up in a big way. So who is the one receiver uh, on this Packers team that you are interested in maybe buying before the game? I'm going to say Dontavian Wicks. And like, you know, just from a, a stats perspective, I already gave you uh, a look at some of the efficiency that we've seen from Dontavian Wicks this year. It, it's been absolutely incredible. And I do think that, again, from a perception standpoint, that fifth round draft capital does matter. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's... 22 years old um, in the second half of the season, we found him, you know, taking on a, a pretty significant role in this offense. And I think he's taken full advantage of every opportunity that he's had with Christian Watson out. Um, you know, he's shown very capable to play on the outside with uh, some boom potential, uh, three touchdowns over the past two games. Um, I just think he's, he's kind of coming into his own. He's a versatile guy. He can play out of the slot as well. Um, I, I really want to look at Dontavian Wicks, especially from that value perspective, given his draft capital. How about you? I'm just still interested in Chris, Christian Watson because the upside is just so ridiculous. The last time he played the Cowboys, I think he scored four touchdowns and just went just went off. Um, he has not been healthy basically all year. His status for this game is still in question. Um, I think he's going to play. He's just the X factor to me because I think of all the receivers, he's the most dangerous but can he be a reliable option? Can he develop into anything more than just a vertical threat? Okay, we shall see. Here's uh, the thing, Marcus. Availability, pretty important. And yes. Christian Watson, he has played, uh, let's see, 20 games out of 34 since he was drafted uh, in the 22 draft. So I think- and How many of those has he left early, right? A, a number of them. And yep. like, that is the biggest thing. So like, yes, while he's on the field, obviously he is explosive touchdown potential for days, but you look at the availability factor and there have already been a number of other receivers in this team that have shown themselves to be available more often. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, all right, let's talk about the the Bills. Because uh, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, lifelong Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, <laughs> which receiver could have a breakout performance in round one of the playoffs? We'll get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fastest and the easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total upfront, so you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. 
Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, Kate, let's talk about the Bills this weekend. Um, we need to at least acknowledge the weather. I was literally just looking up the, the weather report before we jumped on. 65 mile an hour wind gust possible in Buffalo. At least a foot of snow on Sunday alone. So throwing the ball is going to be hard. I mean, Josh Allen does have a really good arm, but throwing the ball is going to be hard. Uh, I just wanted to mention Khalil Shakir because... Gabe Davis has now officially been ruled out with a PCL injury. He did not practice at all this week. I've got doubts that he's going to play at any point in this playoffs, even if the Bills advance. Uh, well, we don't have to talk about whether the Bills are going to advance or not because I've got my doubts. But Shakir is now in an interesting spot because he's pretty clearly the number two receiver on this Bills team. And, Kate, if you like look forward to the future with this Bills team, uh, Gabe Davis is a free agent. I have no idea what's going to happen with Stefan Diggs. I mean, there's a lot going on kind of behind the scenes with Diggs. Uh, they did draft Dalton Kincaid to be the inside receiver, the, the inside tight end. I think Shakir has a really good chance to grab a hold of this wide receiver two job with a really strong playoff performance. I think that's totally fair. Now, uh, Khalil Shakir in his second year drafted in the fifth round. He's just shy of his 23rd birthday. Um, you know, six foot, 196 pounds. He's, you know, a little bit on the smaller side, but, um, you know, I think it like kind of surprised everybody a little bit, uh, with his, his combine four, four, three, 40 yard dash, uh, ranks in the 76th percentile, uh, ranked in the 93rd percentile for his 10 yard split. So, um, you know, a, a little bit of burst off the line there. He is a slot guy. And that is my biggest question. Now, statistically he is having a really good season, especially in the second half of the year. Now, overall among wide receivers with 40 or more targets this year, ranks 14th in the league with 15.7 yards per reception, third in the league with 7.3 yards after the catch per reception, and first among wide receivers in that cohort with 133.6 passer rating when targeted. Incredible. Now, let me go back to the fact that he is a slot guy. So um, he has had just 21%, uh, just over 21% of snaps played out wide this year. But Dalton Kincaid, probably going to kind of dominate these routes out of the slot here is Dalton Kincaid going to be the biggest limiting factor to Khalil Shakir's long-term upside in this bill's offense and therefore his long-term upside for dynasty. Potentially. The good news is I think Josh Allen is the type of quarterback that can support multiple receivers. Uh, and one of the things that we've seen from Shakir is it seems like whenever he gets an opportunity he makes big plays. He's really good after the catch. And I acknowledge this is probably not the best game for Shakir just because of the weather, because that field is going to be so cold and slippery. But he just could get a lot of targets, especially if the Bills are they're in a situation where they have to throw the ball. He is just somebody that I'm monitoring as long as the Bills are in the playoffs because he, he already had a role on this team. And with Gabe Davis now out of the picture for maybe the foreseeable future, I, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden he becomes somebody that's pretty intriguing. I, I would also say the price is pretty good right now. Wide receiver 58, or excuse me, wide receiver 59 in your dynasty leagues. He costs you absolutely nothing. I'm willing to jump in at that price. Yeah, I think the the price is is very very fair um, at that point. And again, just seeing kind of what he accomplished in the second half of the season. Um, and you know what, Marcus? Like, if anybody, if, if we're looking at this receiving core and maybe what this team is going to be able to accomplish from a passing standpoint, like they're not going to be able to target 
way down the field, right? They're not going to be able to send long bombs to Stefan Diggs because let's going to be honest, like 60 plus mile per hour wins. That's not, that's not exactly going to probably swing here, but get the ball into the hands of Khalil Shakir, who's got, you know, among the wide receivers on this team, the lowest average depth of target, um, you know, but again, making the most uh, for plays after the catch, this is a game that could play into Shakir's hands just based on his skill set and the way they've utilized him as, uh, you know, more of the underneath guy who's able to make plays after the catch. Like that's kind of what you have to do in these windy environments. You're either going to run the ball or you're going to try to get some of these easy completions and let your players do the most after the catch. One other guy that I'm just really curious to see is James Cook, who has had a really nice season, uh, finishes, well, I think, one of the top 10 running backs in fantasy this year. Um, this is a big opportunity, especially with the weather, because yeah. – Buffalo is going to have to run the ball. Do they trust him in games like this and especially playoff games to have 22, 25 touches or, and this is my fear is we see a lot of Leonard Fournette playoff Lenny and it's, it's Fournette who's getting some of the goal line touches or some of the high, you know, the third and shorts when Buffalo absolutely needs to convert. I, 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 I don't really care about how he performs because I think this game is going to be a mess. I want to see how the Bills are using James Cook and what's their confidence level in him in a huge playoff game like this. I do think, I mean, looking over the past three weeks, we've seen uh, each of the last three weeks, you know, just a client workload uh, for, you know, James Cook. And I think, you know, obviously part of that, they're integrating Leonard Fournette into this offense. I do think it's not a, a great, move. I, I don't think it's their smartest move. I think, uh, you know, this offense has really hummed uh, at its best when you're feeding James Cook a ton of touches, obviously a bit more explosive than playoff Lenny at this point in his career. So yeah. while I agree with you uh, that usage is definitely something to watch, um, I don't necessarily agree if they don't utilize him heavily because man, if you're looking for a chance to make an impact in this game. We know it's going to come on the ground and we know which one of these running backs has the, the most explosive playmaking opportunities here. All right. So let's transition to another running back, but in the same game who has played really, really well since Pittsburgh has made a quarterback change. We will get to him next. This episode is brought to you by Jace medical. I know that we all come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for just a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That is terrifying. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than my daughter or my son getting sick while a supply chain issue kept them from a life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we're going to be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, among others, stuff that could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It has never been more important to be prepared than today, go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get 20% off your order. Welcome back to the locked on dynasty football podcast. Every day is on Monday. Kay and I will be back breaking down all of the action from round one of the playoffs. We've also got some special off season shows that we're going to be starting here in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you guys are tuning in for that. A lot of good series that we've been working on behind the scenes. So, uh, make sure you're downloading the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, let's talk about one more running back. I want to talk about Najee Harris. Uh, my thoughts on Najee have been known. I, I, I'm not a huge fan. You are a big Najee Harris fan. For the first two years of this podcast, you had a Najee Harris jersey <laughs> right over your shoulder. Uh, but I'm starting to come around. I will say, Marcus, as a Najee Harris fan, like coming into the season, you know, just – feeling a little bit dejected. We have not seen the same player that he was at Alabama so far in his career. But Marcus, the second half of this season has been a different story. And 
you teased it at the top, especially since the Pittsburgh Steelers have made a quarterback change and they've started to produce on offense just a little bit. Uh, over the past three weeks, we've seen Najee Harris come out 312 rushing yards and that spanned four rushing touchdowns, ranked third or sorry, fourth in fantasy points per game in half PPR formats, averaging 24 rush attempts per game that leads all running backs over the past three weeks. Um, and again, that's, that's the span in which they've started, um, you know, Mason Rudolph, but I think what we're starting to see is Najee Harris get in more of a rhythm. I think most, you know, encouraging for me is the fact that Najee Harris's vision looks tenfold what it was oh, yeah. just a year ago. And we're starting to see him read the field in a much more mature manner in a way that I think we all kind of expected that he would coming out of the gate, but it's taken a lot of time for that to come to fruition. I'm super encouraged by what I've seen at this point in the season. Uh, been a lot more explosive, been a, a tough runner, uh, plenty of yards after contact. Most carries uh, per NFL and next gen stats. Um, he has the third most uh, carries that have resulted in five or more rushing yards over expected in the NFL, 27 such carries this season. Again, that is third, uh, sorry, fourth in the league. Um, you know, like you, you look at what he has accomplished and again, not, not living up to what you may have drafted him to be no. necessarily, but this could present a by low opportunity because again, recency bias, uh, but from a contract perspective, Marcus, this could be a huge opportunity for Najee. He is heading into his fourth NFL season next year. He could be earning a fifth year option with this team. Remember, he is a former first round pick. Mm -hmm. And if he's staying in Pittsburgh, that is nothing but good news for his dynasty value, I think, especially considering the way that he's developed this year. Yeah, and I... I think he's played really well the last couple of weeks. We even saw like in this Ravens game, a game that the Steelers had to win to make the playoffs. It was Najee getting a lot of the work and Jalen Warren went back to being a part-time running back. And now it's Najee that's getting all of the goal line work. And I'm again, I'm going to keep mentioning the weather. It is supposed to be awful in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And that just fits Najee's style a little bit more than Jalen Warren, who has been really, really good this season. I could see if, Najee has a, you know, one of these games where it's 26 carries for 130 yards and a touchdown. Things started to trend in the direction for Pittsburgh to pick up his fifth year option. I, I think he's cheap right now. He's incredibly cheap. He's well, RB 26. I'm, I'm willing to buy Najee Harris right now because I like the way that he's played over the last few weeks. Yeah, I love it. And I do think, like you said, this is going to be an opportunity for them to, ride Najee into the ground at this point. I mean, Marcus, we, we, you know, talked about how this is going to be a very difficult game for Josh Allen to throw the ball. Uh, this is going to be a tough game for anybody to throw the ball. And let's like shout out uh FanDuel sports book right now. The over under on Najee Harris rushing yards, 60 and a half. Oh, I'll get, take the over all day there. Smashing day. the over the over under on rushing attempts, Marcus 15 and a half over. Boy, over, over, over. And I do think, again, this is going to be a game that this is the type of game, the type of running back that Najee Harris is, was made to play. 100% agree. Should be fun to watch. I cannot wait to sit home on my couch while they're playing in negative 20 degree weather to watch my bills. Uh, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every single day. Go check out the YouTube channel where we post videos every single day. We've also got some shorts up there as well that Kate has been producing. So make sure you check those out. Uh, follow the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Uh, follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Check her work out at Behind the Steel Curtain, Yahoo, Pro Football Focus, a million different other sites. She does absolutely fantastic work. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy round one of the playoffs and we will be back on Monday to break it all down.